What's up, everybody? Fingers. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome back to Unveil Paranormal News, uh, where we bring you like the only paranormal news. No, it's kidding. <laughs> we, right. we bring you some information that you may find helpful one day in your right. paranormal yeah. journey. <laughs> yeah, we try to bring you like upcoming events to go to. We try to highlight some equipment. I like those locations. <laughs> occasionally have tea. So much stuff. Tea is. A little bit of tea here and there. It never hurts, right? Right. <laughs> I have soda tonight, guys. So. Yeah, so do I. We, we right. had to do things a little differently tonight, too, because I'm kind of in Facebook jail for the next three days. So. Yeah. That's why, Brad, that's why the camera setup's a little different. Brad is a felon. <laughs> repeat, repeat felon. He's a repeat fe Facebook felon, and he doesn't know how to get his shit straight, so he is in jail. Yep, I can't post anything, I can't comment, and I can't message anybody. So that's why the uh, setup's a little different, because she wasn't able to send me the link via messenger so I could open it. So, yep. so welcome Brad and Henry. Henry yeah. gets to hang out with us. Yeah, he's going to be with us the whole show holding shit. Yes, so Henry has a very important job tonight, so. Definitely. All right, guys, but let's go ahead and get started on your news, because that is why you are here. Uh, biggest news I think so far I've seen this week is Willow's Weep is torn down. Yep. Um, he finally I went through with it. I can't believe it. Yep. So Willow's Weep, uh, if you don't know, it's located in Indiana. Um, Dave Spinks wrote a book on it, and it's been on some shows, right? Um, I think so. I think so. I've been there a couple uh, times. Allegedly a demonic building. I guess this was one of them that people think is demonic or had demonic activity, is my understanding. Mm hmm um, I don't know Haley Ray personally. This was on the Willow's Weep debunked page. Apparently Willow's Weep was hated that much <laughs> that they had a debunked page. I was um, a member of that group. <laughs> I don't think I was, but I was able to view this. So maybe I was and didn't realize it. Um, yeah. But they were um, obviously, you know, she's, I, I don't know the story behind it. Maybe Brad knows more than I do. Um, but I don't know who she, I don't know who she is, how she claims it had something to do with her mom. I don't, I don't know any of that story. I just know the house is was supposedly had multi, had suicides in it. Supposedly there was a chair with blood on it from a suicide, but I was in the house a couple of different times. I had weird stuff happen, but anything yeah. noteworthy? Um the few things I remember is they caught an one of the stick figures in an SLS camera like beating on me. And, oh, on the car ride, and on the car ride home from it, I got a bloody nose. Um, yeah. Do, do, why are you always getting hurt on car ride? Like, it, it's, I, I don't know. It's always like, something. It is. But so. um, that happened. I remember seeing, like, a weird green hand at one point. Ooh. Yeah, we the, the house was shaped like a cross. And we were standing at one end of it and looking all the way across the building and it like looked like it came in through a door. It was it was weird. So the, the house was weird, but I don't think it was demonic. It definitely had weird feelings. But yeah, the few times I was there were for meet and greets and then I spent the night and investigated after the meet and greets. Oh really? Mm-hmm. So my question is, it was shaped like a cross. Do you know what room was in the middle of that cross? It was just kind of like a family room. Really? Okay. Like you would, like if you entered the house, most of the time you entered through the back door was the kitchen. And then it went to like a family room that had two little rooms off to the side. There were like no doors on it any, either. So you could see into yeah. every single room. Yeah. And there was an upstairs too that had a window but there was no access to it. So I don't know how you ever got to it. There was no outside access other than the window and there was no stairs inside. So it was a weird building. It was a very, very weird building. 
torn down by actual demons. I don't know about that, Emil. Uh, he's kind of an asshole. I would call him a demon. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, if you're talking about, uh, we're, if you guys don't know, we're talking about Dave Sphinx. I don't know. Come out me, bro. Here we go again, right? Uh, right. <laughs> I'm just, all I'm going to say is from my understanding, he's a, a dick. So, and I'll say that, and that's again, not my personal experience. It is what I heard. <laughs> I've met him. I've interviewed with him. I was actually there the day he bought the building. So Yeah, you mentioned that. Yep. yep. All right. In other news, guys, talking about more locations here. Ooh, locations here. Wilson Castle, I've heard of many times. Um, they are opening in two weeks. I honestly am unsure exactly what that means. Um, this location, I believe, if I'm remember right is located in ohio this one specifically yeah Somebody this is the location i'm house. not familiar with then they twice love that place so amel do that does that mean that they always allow investigations or do you know if they were closed for a while because i seen this right before the show and i'm like well i'm going to share this because opening days in two weeks which i don't know what that means because i didn't research it prior so um it's in vermont okay i was way off <laughs> so if anybody knows uh what this means um they had work group done oh my gosh this is why we have amel he's he's just the bomb Thanks, um, so they did have some work done all right cool so definitely if you're interested in wilson castle um they will be opening again so look forward to that all right in other news friends if i can get myself if i look around guys it's because my camera's like right in front of my face so i have to like look around Ooh, the owner is decent we love good owners we yes. do yes owners of locations that are fun to work with entertaining mm -hmm. a decent human being are yeah. always make the experiences yeah. better absolutely absolutely we love us a good owner also bel air house is now booking overnight paranormal investigations again i did not research this in advance i don't know if they weren't doing overnights for a while um but uh four days ago they did post that they are now booking um overnight investigations if that's something you're interested in not a location i've been to i've been there once it was a public event we literally were there we drove like five six hours to get there we're there for like three or four and drove right home so that tells you anything five or six yeah it's probably about how far it is five or six hours because i know this bel air ohio is right across from west virginia yep it's right on the west virginia ohio border right off 70 like literally maybe a half mile off 70. i'm on my show I have Bradley. Yes, you can come say hi. You know it, guys. It's that time of the show when we get a pop in. But we can't see her because you still have the thing popped up. Oh, shoot. I do. Hold on. <laughs> hi, Aurora. I got Mexican drink. Where, Mexican. You had hit, you went and got Mexican for dinner? No. Yes, you did. No, my dad just got this out. Oh, okay. <laughs> it looks like an alcoholic beverage. That's not alcohol, is I it? I know. So I'm going to pretend it's alcohol. <laughs> get off here. You're going to get me booted off YouTube. Okay, <laughs> hey, why don't you shut the door for me since you're here? Thank you. All right, guys. There's a little pop-in from the little one. Everybody, we do have some events coming up, and we do have some sad news. Um... Crown Point, this event it was scheduled. The Incarcerated Shadows Paracon is canceled. Yep. Um, the town of Crown Point is giving Sandy and the jail, like, hell over fire laws and all kinds of stuff. So, the uh, I know we talked about uh, Crown Point Jail last week on the show, but it looks like it's going to be closed for a while until they can get there stuff up to code yeah so that is a huge bummer um sandy um and everybody else that i've ever met there is great 
sweet people. Um, had no issues. Awesome jail. Awesome history. I love the fact that Johnny Depp was there and I can be there at the same, like, not the same time, but like, it's like in the same like, space. It's like we know each other now. Okay. <laughs> Um, back when he was cute. I mean, now he kind of looks like a bum. I don't know, but <laughs> he, he didn't look so hot in his court proceedings. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I can understand that. So, unfortunately, this is uh, the situation here. Um, it has been canceled. However, one of our other favorite jail houses is still open and has an event this week in the Ohio State Reformatory. Um. It has the Paris Icon this weekend. Yes. Fred, have I ever there, told you I've never been here? You've never been to the building at all? No. Oh, my goodness. I've never investigated it at night. I've only done the daytime tour a couple times. So, but it's a yeah. neat place. So, after I finally get to Randolph. <laughs> That's your next location you want to knock off the list? This is going to be the next one. I want to make sure I get to investigate. Yeah, I'm down. I, like I said, I've never investigated at night. I've only taken the daytime tour. Um, they they host a lot of cool events there. So, but yeah, there's supposed to be a crap ton of yes. uh, celebrities at this one. Paris Icon. I shared this post on it. Yeah, that's what I wanted to mention. There is supposed to be a ton of celebrities that are going to be at this one. So fully expect that. All right, guys. Also, this weekend, it's going to be this Sunday. Um, Warner Paranormal. I don't know if you guys follow them. Um, that's part of the Warners um, from Amityville and all that that they used to do. Um, Amityville is like the main way people know them. Um, their nephew is part of this and... So the Warner Paranormal is all stems from that. They do have an event this Sunday. Um, this is not in our area. It is in Maryland. So we're going a little bit further east here. But I did think, I did, I thought I should just go ahead and share this one with you all too. All right. One of my other favorite places we got to go to here, Bradley. What's the next one? Gettysburg. Yes, I want to go to Gettysburg for sure. Go ahead and tell them about this little Gettysburg bus tour that they see here on the screen. So yeah, they're doing haunted bus tours in Gettysburg. They're gonna like drive you around to the different haunted haunted hotspots. Um, I, I can't read the date because my camera is so small. So. Oh yeah, I forgot you. <laughs> you have your cell phone. Okay, so it's 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 the Memorial Day weekend, May twenty fifth through Sunday, May twenty sixth. They're at eight p.m. They'll be doing those bus tours. Um, so if you follow anything at Gettysburg, you're gonna be like, well, they always have ghost crap going on. Yes, they do. But I I caught this one. I thought, oh, that sounds fun. A bus tour. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be real fun. For sure. All right, guys. In other news, this location. Okay. How do you say this word? I say bile manner, but then I think it's probably not bile because bile like makes me think of vomit. <laughs> right. I would say beal. Beal manner? Let us know in the comments if you know how we're supposed to say the haunted beal slash bile manner. <laughs> From Fremont, Ohio. I I just don't know. Um, anyways, this is in August, so we're pushing a little bit further out now. Um, Miss Lauren Helkinson would be here, will be at this event. I'm familiar with her. Um, also this Cherish O. Williams. I feel like I should know her, but I don't. Sorry, Cherish. This is, is a location Cherish? I've not is been it, to yet. See, look, is it Cherish or Cherise? I don't I, know. Beal Bile. I can't English today. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. I just can't speak English. It's Bill. We usually say it like Bill Manor. Carlos oh. says it like Brad does. Carlos, the owner. Wait, so how'd you say it again? I would say Beal. Beal. So like Bill, but like with a 
accent, Beal. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like Be Hill. Like Be Hill, but there's no H. I, I hate English. <laughs> I don't know. She looks like Bile. So Beal, Beal Manor. I'm going to start saying it like that. I'll try to put that in my brain for next time we talk about it. One of the good places worth the stay. Get it for the weekend, not just one night. Oh, really? Good to know. I don't know how far Fremont is from Indiana, so. But might be worth it. Worth the, worth the, I, I, think mean, near, I think it's up near uh, Cleveland, I believe. Oh, so then like. Or Toledo area. Oh, if it's Toledo, that's not far from me at all. Troubled kids home. So we're talking like. Um, like an orphanage. So that's a little bit longer or a little bit further away. Cleveland. Like an orphanage? No, uh, maybe. Or like, um, you know, like where they have a juvenile home, like, a, like, a. Oh, like a, like a boy's school or a. Yeah. Girl school. Okay. But they're in a residence. Right. I don't know. So. All right. Next on the agenda, we just have a couple more to share with you guys because we have lots of stuff to share with you later in the show. Brad has a shit ton of stuff to share with us. So I do. We're going to try to get to that. Um, in other news, we have, if I can find it, Parapalooza in Texas. So we're heading south this time. Guys, like I said, I'm going to try and out events all around at least the states. Um, that's where most people watch the show. So is in the states. So if I see something from Texas, California, all over the place, I'll share it for sure. Um, so here we go, the Parapalooza in Texas. Might give you a reason to go to Texas if you've never been there. Although, according to Brad, this time of year probably sucks in Texas. <laughs> yeah. I was in Texas last year in August, and it was horrible. It was like 110 degrees. It was still like 100 degrees at like 10 o'clock at night. So definitely well, not, not my thing. Well, this is September 7th, so maybe it'll cool down to about 95. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Um, so if that's something you're interested in, um, there's the information on the screen for you guys. And finally, we have the Witch Fest in, oh, this is not my last one, actually, I lied. The Witch Fest in Bloomington, Indiana. This is September 21st. Um, so for those of you that are into this kind of thing, definitely something you can go and check out. That's a college town, so it's probably going to be fun. Um, right. But definitely uh, look into that. Yeah, there's a lot of witchy stuff in southern Indiana. The Bedford area, which is farther south than Bloomington, but all a lot there's a lot of witchy stuff down in that area of the state. Which the same, but not the same yet similar. We have the Pagan Pride Day, in a sense similar. <laughs> it is. This um, one is this one's held here in Indy though. It's been canceled the last few years because they've been having trouble finding a location big enough for it that's not right. going to charge them an arm and a leg to have it there. Right. So if anyone's ever been to the past, it used to be in uh, Broad Ripple Park. Then they tried to have it at the Marion County Fairgrounds a few times. So now they're okay. doing it in Garfield Park, I believe, is where they're having it, right? I, I, didn't, I don't know. I didn't screenshot that part. <laughs> yeah, I think it's in Garfield Park, which is a pretty decent sized park on the southeast side of Indy, so not too far from me. Yeah, so um, Fort Wayne also does have Pagan Pride Days, um, but I'm not sure exactly when those will be. And our final event is Irvington, um, Irvington in New, in Indiana, uh, or in Indianapolis, the Irvington area. Brad's familiar with, he can tell you all sorts of stories about Irvington. Oh, yeah. Irvington's great. Irvington's on the east side. It's probably like one of the most haunted areas of Indianapolis. They have a huge Halloween festival every year. That's what this is. Um, be prepared to be elbow to elbow to everyone. Like They literally closed down Washington Street, which is like the main street that runs through east and west through Indianapolis. They completely close it down for like four or five blocks and just have like a street fair. Yeah. Thousands and thousands of people. And get there early because parking is horrible. It's not walkable from for you, right? From my house? No. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, I but I, I have a good parking spot for people who want to go. Um, they can message me and I can tell them where I would suggest parking. Okay. Good, good. I, I did get to visit Irvington a couple summers ago with Brad. Um, very cool area. Definitely would recommend just checking it out. Check it out. And in the, the Fridays and Saturdays in October, this isn't on here yet, um, they will yeah. do uh, Irvington Ghost Walks. Really? That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I got to catch one of those next year or this October. Mm -hmm. for sure. All right, guys. We're going to head on over to our next segment here. It's uh, Henry's favorite. Here's yeah. your next, next one. It's Skywalk. Do another one. <laughs> we got an alien coming through. We're in Atascosa, Texas. Do it again. Is she gonna disappear on us now or what? No, it's gonna go Yep, I bet. He gone. No. Shavaka do. Where? You see it? Because I don't. Well, so much for aliens. Yeah, that was weird. Do another one. All right. I don't know if you guys can all see that. And I don't know where we my sound is. Can you hear my sound? We're in I hear it. Perspective. You could? Oh, okay. Yeah. I can't. Do it again. What do you think? What do you, what does everybody think this is? Do you guys think? I wish I could zoom in. Oop, don't see that one yet. Do wish I could one. zoom into the video. Right. Because uh, it, it, it just appears as like a we white got light. An alien coming through or an into that cloud and it never comes back out. It kind of looks like it has a little bit of something going out. Kind of. But then it's it looks kind of like a ball. Yeah, Kinda of looks like a little penis with like light up balls, honestly. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> honestly, and then like Shavaka do the appendage disappears and it's just Where? a ball. You see it? Cause I don't. <laughs> Could be. Like, it, it disappears and hides. <laughs> right. I don't know. What do you guys think? Don't listen to me. <laughs> but yeah, it does it? It goes behind the clouds, and well, I don't so think it comes back out. It doesn't. Yeah, that was so do another one that's why we can't this is why we can't nice things <laughs> we got an alien coming through so i just i wonder um could it seem like it goes behind the seems like it goes behind the cloud and then like they, they watch it long enough you think it would come out the other side of the yeah, cloud maybe it goes beyond human sight at that point i don't Maybe. Maybe they turn on their cloaking device. Maybe. That's why we're not seeing it. Maybe it's still there. See, I can't hear the sound, so which is weird. Um, so does it, can you hear a sound of it, from it, or you just hear a person talking? Just a person talking in a car. Do another one. Okay. But the guy's commentary is pretty funny, so you may want to watch the video after this. We got an alien coming Dang through. It. Why can't I hear the sound? That's weird. Do it again. Okay, fine. But yeah, anyways, there so you have it. All right, for all of you, uh, by the way, this reminds me last that? night, our next segment. Shavaka I had a do. dream Where? last yeah, night I mm -hmm. that had bats in it. Oh, fun. It's not like a premonition of this weekend, right? I woke up freaking terrified about this weekend. Oh, geez. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna mention where well, we're going, so but I'm just gonna say, guys, I'm investigating this weekend, and yeah, that was weird. if I a freaking bat shows one. up at this location, I'm gonna be ticked. 
<laughs> but yes, no, you we were there. Me and a ton of other people that I went to school to with Texas. was there. We were in this huge building. We were giving tours we because we're ghost hunters and we do this regularly. So we it's were offering to give what? tours to these people. We gave our tours during the day and then we went back to actually bad. have the equipment and do it like they did like a daytime Shabaka tour and then there's night like to the investigation Where? and as soon as we all got in this space like this big space it's kind of like a maze but they like it's a maze of bubbles and stuff so like you have to go around like these elongated bubbles and these little bubbles and like it's weird all right. i always have weird dreams guys go read my blogs so i'm a weirdo and suddenly the bats show up do another one done. I woke up. Damn it! <laughs> the first thing I thought of was we this got an weekend. Alien coming oh jeez. We're in Adams, so. Texas. I don't and know bats at this location. I can't it. imagine there will be. So it's not been closed down that long. So. Right. Right. Exactly. So anybody watching the show that's been where we're going and knows where we're going this weekend, let me know if there's bats. I appreciate you. But let's get on to our next segment and my least favorite. Here's when bats attack. squealing and telling it to <laughs> coax it out the door yeah so normal ghost hunter reaction <laughs> yep yep pretty much um it is kind of funny every time and i i see this is hashtag osr so this is what old state reformatory um probably so i would assume maybe that's where they were um <laughs> oh my gosh we're like and i just got done saying that i want to go here yeah that'll definitely be a wear a hoodie type night i will tell you guys those of you that are scared of bats i feel like west virginia penitentiary gave us the gave me the best advice because i was about to have a panic attack that night there were so many bats but i wanted to investigate because one it's expensive two i drove all that way um, so I really want to investigate, but they are not the worst place, uh, not the worst amount of bats that I've seen at a place, but there were enough there to annoy me and make me panic a little bit. And the best advice they gave me was walk along the walls. That, that way, sense. it is most likely that I'm not going to get hit by a bat. Because that makes the good sense. Are, Yeah. So, cause they're gonna bounce them off the walls. So they're gonna make sure they don't hit the wall. And if I'm up against the wall, I'm not likely to get hit. Yeah, and if you're using a uh, video cam will, camera that's a night vision, they'll be drawn to the IR. Oh, so really? That's sometimes why they swoop at video cameras. <laughs> 
That'd be why John got hit, probably. Yeah, that's exactly why John got hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just a little bit of advice, guys, if you are like me and terrified of these creatures, um, I guess walk along the walls. And so far it worked. It worked. I ended up, I lasted at West Virginia that night. I was anxious the whole night but i really didn't get the ghosty feels that i would have preferred to have because i was too distracted but it's whatever so a little bit of advice for y'all all right brad i told you it'd be about 30 minutes okay good so i can, I can talk for 15 to 20. tonight brad has some goodies for us that he'd like to share he was blessed this past week and he's going to share that with us so everybody this is your weekly feature well i said the backwards your feature of the week making you bigger okay so um Last week, I was contacted by one of my former uh, team leaders of one of the very first paranormal teams I was ever on. And he's like, I'm not going to be in the paranormal anymore. I'm getting out. I have all this equipment in my garage. Do you want it? And I'm like, sure, sure, I'll come take it. And so last Thursday, I went down there and I got like 10 cases like the cases you see him holding i have like 10 of these things full of different equipment but um i was going to show you some of the stuff that i got this is i don't know what this actually is and i'll take guesses so it's got two sockets for light bulbs it's got a camera mount and you can plug it into the wall i don't Anybody know what this know? Is. i have no idea what this would be used for I thought about mounting a camera on it and installing uh, black lights to see if that would affect anything if I filmed with black light. So that's something I'm going to try. It has a weird little handle on the end, but I also got like five new tripods in this stuff that I got. And one of the tripods has a big ring that this looks like it'll slide down in. So okay. I'm thinking about mounting it to a tripod even. A touch uh, lamp lantern. I wonder what that is. I was given a geophone that's real super sensitive. So it like, yeah. I don't know if you can see it. So for those watching that don't know what a geophone does, can you explain? So it picks up vibration. So if I set it up here on this case and I like bounce my feet on the floor, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Yep, can. The lights will light up and the more you, more you, the bounce, it, the more it vibrates, the more lights will light up. So it picks up vibrations. So if something walks by, I got a bunch of digital cameras. Um, I found one Nokia L19. How old is that thing? <laughs> mm, I don't know. It doesn't shoot in night vision, but if it's a good digital camera, so. Yeah. I found like four or five digital cameras. I found a couple of Olympus voice recorders. So I'm actually going to start using recorders again. I usually use Sony's, but hey, two free Olympus voice recorders was pretty yeah. cool. And then I also got a, whoa, he's not doing a good job of holding stuff. We're going to move this to the floor and then I'll show Get what's in them. Together, Henry. Jeez. All right, he's slacking. He's, he's he tired. Talking? He needs a nap. I got a Zoom, Zoom H2. What the heck is that thing? It's like a prof professional um, voice recorder. Oh, nice. Yeah, so... I'm super excited to use that. It's e even able to be mounted to a tripod and it's That's got awesome. a 360 degree mic on it. That's awesome. And then I was given an actual old school Olympus 
voice recorder that actually uses tapes. Oh my god! <laughs> and there were even tapes in there, brand new ones. That's so crazy. How long has your friend been in the field prior? Um, probably, let's see. I joined his team in like 2012. Okay. And he'd been doing it for years. He's He wrote in a Southside newspaper. He was from the South Side of Indianapolis. Okay. His name was Rick Hinton. He wrote for the uh, a South Side newspaper and about ghost stories and stuff. Um, he was a... Uh, the team leader of South Central Paranormal, which was part of Steve Edwards, the guy that originally opened up uh, the Rhodes Hotel oh, to right. the public. So he was part of his whole like conglomerate of three teams. Um, yeah, I was asked to join their team in like 2012. Okay, they had like a 15-page application you had to fill out. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. That was, it was fun. I investigated with him a few times. And then right after that, John and I kind of stepped away from them. That's one of the first teams I was ever on with John. Yeah. And when John and I kind of stepped away from them and started in the afterlife. Oh, that's awesome. But yeah, so they sent, he had like cases, like. Cases of stuff. Cases and cases of stuff. I only brought like five of them back here and there's probably like at least five more. Yeah. We'll, like we'll look into the that J, uh, Jill and uh, figure out if um, Brad can't really see the comments on here very well. Yeah, I can't. I can't read anything. But um, yeah, we'll look into that. If we find it, figure it out what that first uh, item does. Oh, uh, the light know. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So this case is full of like it's got a strobe light in it. It's got motion activated lights. It's got a taser that I know that they've used on some of their investigations to uh, yeah. see if it would cause activity. It's got walkie talkies. I know one of the cases I didn't bring back here has a parabolic mic in it with the yeah. headphones and everything. Yeah. Yep, I agree, Jill. It's definitely awesome to pay it forward to go ahead and pass down your equipment. That's that's an awesome thing. Yep, this one's another. Uh, yeah, I was super honored. Because I hadn't been part of their team in, oh, like, nearly a decade, probably. But, yeah, yeah, he reached out to me and John, and John's like, Brad will probably take it. So I got, like, a bunch of motion-activated lights. Awesome. I got all their their uh, Benedictine medals and their rosaries and oh, wow. stuff to do blessings with. What else do I have? Oh, I have a, a static um, detector. So it you kind of works like a REM pod. It doesn't make noise. It just lights up. Oh, but it, okay. It's static. I don't think I've seen one of those. Yeah, Jill, um, the pink taser is totally making me want one. Right. <laughs> and I, and also in the also in the one of the cases was a laser grid that actually puts out like graph like a graph paper thing on the wall in like red and white or red stripes. Let me see if I can. So you can't see yeah, it. Yeah, can, you can kind of see it. But yeah, it puts out vertical and horizontal, like full lines, not just dots. I'm curious to know some of this equipment you're sharing here is probably definitely at least 10 years old. Yeah, yeah. None of this stuff's super new or modern, but I kind of like using old technology I, at times. I like seeing the old equipment because I didn't start investigating like this until 2016. Okay. So it's kind of cool to like see some of this older stuff that was used. Mm hmm Like this case has a flash for a camera, another uh, strobe light, some headphones. Yeah, he literally just invited me into his garage and said, here, take all of this. That's but awesome. I, have, I have so many cases. I mean, just in cases alone, I it was worth, because they're all foam lined. Yeah. Like this one has a night vision camera. Oh, wow. A Vivitar night vision camera. Yeah. Um, a remote, it looks like a remote 360 um, IR light. 
an IR light that you can mount to your camera. Yeah. And another Polaroid IR light. So yeah, I, I have so much more equipment and I already had, everyone knows that I already had carried a lot of equipment with me. So now I have yeah. so much more. Right. Um, um, there was like four or five, I didn't bring it back here. It's in one of the other cases. There's like four or five different um, EMF meters that I'd never seen before. Really? I'd never That's seen, good. like I've never seen used. I want to see. <laughs> um, Abel has some advice. He says strobe light, fog machine, plus a high speed camera. Thank me later. Um, I got a fog machine in this deal too, a big one. Did you really? I did, yeah. What does a strobe light fog machine and high speed camera cost? You probably could see stuff moving through it. Yeah. But yeah, I got a portable speaker, some cables. Okay. But yeah, it that's totally feels like Christmas. That's what Jill said. It totally. Oh yeah, like it totally was, and it was just <laughs> he just reached out out of the blue and was like, "Hey, I need to get this stuff out of my garage. Do you want it?" And I'm like, "Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take." Because he wanted to give it Brandy. to someone he knew would use it. Yeah. And I try to go ghost hunting as much as heavenly possible. So. Uh yeah, Brad is a lifer in the field. Yeah. Um, he will be doing this a long time. For sure, for sure. Um, I'm trying to think of, like I said, there was like five uh, five different uh, tripods. One of those was really weird, like I said, weird and had this special thing that looked like a compass. There was an actual compass in one of the totes. Yeah, a compass is like a classic like device that they would use. Mm -hmm. And this team was trying to be real super scientific. At, scientific. And they used lots of levels to check the le how level floors were. Oh, so really? I probably, so I probably have like six or seven levels now. Different sizes. But yeah, they tried to be super scientific when they went out and investigated. I wonder the reason for the levels. Um, by the way, Jill says she loves your shirt. Oh, thanks. It's pretty true, <laughs> too. <laughs> um, but... The levels, do you think that they're saying like if the floor is wonky, that may make you feel kind of wonky or? Yeah, I think so. I think they, I think they would use it like if people were complaining of like a fun house effect in their house, because they did a lot, they yeah, mostly yeah. did residentials. They wanted to. Okay. Yeah. This is, the, this is the team that didn't want to go to the pay to play places. Hmm. This is who I heard learn pay to play from. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's kind of, is it an insult? <laughs> no, they just they just wanted to be more of a go out and help people. Right. And that was kind of why John and I stepped away cuz you don't get residential thrown in your lap nearly as often as right. we wanted to go ghost hunting. Right. Yeah. So you guys were ready to get out there and explore. Right. Right, right, because I still get residentials now. Yeah. I love doing them. I love helping the people, but I don't get them nearly as often enough just to do that only. So. Right. And there's a lot of factors to doing residentials. You can't do them by yourself. Right. <laughs> you know, so some of us have that issue. Because, um, you know, when I get reached out for, that's always my issue is I'm not a team. It's just me. Right, so I right. have to put together a team of people that I feel are good people. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But, but yeah, I was, there. he had like a ton of different people he could have offered this equipment to. So I was super honored that he decided yeah. to pick me. So I'm going to go through it, piece together what I want. Um, I'm probably going to be giving some away because like I said, I'm not going to need this many levels. <laughs> I don't think I need a level, but, you know, you're just handing this stuff out. I know this girl that investigates with you a lot. Right. Like really I said, needs some cool new gear. <laughs> and that, and next, like I said, we might do a part two of this next week because I'm going to bring back and show the all these weird uh, EMF meters that I'd never seen before. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Because there's like 
I mean, there's a regular gray K2 before they even made the black ones. So I'd, oh, really? I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd seen that. There's yeah. a ghost. There's a ghost meter, which is clear and has an orange end on it. I've seen that, but then there's other ones that I've I've never ever seen used on TV. I don't know where they got them from. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Jeremy jumped in here. Jeremy, what are you asking? You said what equipment? Are you like? Did you just get to the show? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so far what you've looked through, do you have any, any favorites? Um, I'm excited about the Zoom, the Zoom voice okay. recorder. Okay. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the, uh, Geophone. Cause that's, yeah. I, I want to use this. I want to use some of this stuff at my own house. So you can too. You should. Um, right. I, I wanna I wanna highlight this comment for you, Brad, because I know you have a story about this. But first off, Jeremy did just say he just got on, so he's a little confused. Oh, okay. <laughs> the second, Jill says you could be you could be like U-Haul. <laughs> that, um, that's actually kind of funny. And so. so she says and rent them out to people, but I just want to mention the U-Haul part, and you can tell Jill why. <laughs> so the U-Haul is actually kind of funny. So. I like to take photos of the car after I get them loaded for ghost hunts because when I get the car loaded, it's like packed to the gills. Mm -hmm. And one time I took a photo of the car, commented and posted it on my Instagram and said something about, I think I need to run a U-Haul and just hashtag U-Haul. And then U-Haul actually started following me, like the actual <laughs> company. So... U-Haul is actually one of my followers on Instagram. So that's, that's awesome. funny that you actually said that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she was suggesting like rent them out, you know, rent out the stuff. You know, there might be risk there though, but yeah. yeah. So long story short, Jeremy, um, Brad just got an, an investigator's old gear because they're no longer going to be investigating. And he got a ton. Yeah. Like there's like 10 of these cases. So I actually had to go out and buy a like 50 gallon tote to keep all these in. Yeah. I just don't have the space in, in my house. I'm going to keep it out in my attached garage. So I'm going to tote it all back up and that's where I'm going to keep it until, cause I have all my regular gear in my house. So yeah. And so, I, have, I have a crap ton of my own regular stuff. Oh, Jerry wants pictures. He might be interested if you're getting rid of anything that is. But so yeah. <laughs> definitely collaborate with U-Haul. We should totally like we. I wonder if U-Haul supports the paranormal. Like you know what I mean? Like wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> I don't know. That'd be awesome. <laughs> they could start yeah. putting like ghosts on haunted locations on the side of the U-Hauls instead of just random states. We should be like U-Haul. Will you? Will you like? We'll like. We'll rent a U-Haul when we go investigating, and then, like, we could just, like, promote you. <laughs> right, right. Because I, I, I literally have enough stuff. I could probably fill a small U-Haul trailer. Right. If I took everything, all the equipment that I own, I could probably truly fill a small U-Haul trailer. Right, right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot. So, yeah, definitely would be funny to get them involved somehow. But Right. Um. Are you getting more, because you like to come up, you're kind of like me, and you like to think outside the box. And are you coming up with new um, research type ways, or I guess, what is it, experiments um, um, with the gear? You Have you thought of anything cool with the gear that you've I've got? I've not really put work? much thought into it yet. Mm -hmm. I would still like to come up with a way to turn a pen that's on a chain into like a pendulum that can do yeah. automatic writing. Yes. So it's all freehand. We're not actually holding it. It's just dangling. I just, I'm having trouble getting it close enough to the paper that it can make a mark without being so close that it won't, that it, that it can actually move. Yeah. But I've been working on it. I've been wanting to dangle it from a tripod. I've been working on that here in my office a bit. Um, I, I want to, we, last year we were taught 
some of us were taught how to control remote view. Ah, uh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> I've been wanting to do that on some haunted locations. Yeah. Just to test, um, test it. If, just to test it if it's in, if it is enhanced in a, in a haunted location. So. Jeremy, that's a good point. Uh, use those things that register seismic activity. Mm, yeah. I like, wonder, that makes me also think of polygraphs. Like, yeah. Because that, but you'd have to know how to read it, kind of. What if you ask questions? I don't know, though. That, that doesn't make sense. But I don't know. We could still play around with it if we had one. <laughs> right. I do have some other new stuff here. Um, I have some sound activated lights so if it hears a sound it lights up yeah yeah so those i i practiced those a bit here at the house for those that don't know my house is super haunted i i know i've talked about it on the show before but my house has been haunted for as long as i've been here my work has even started feeling like it's been haunted oh so, yeah you've had some experiences at work yeah i I, so I worked Monday night into Tuesday morning on thirds this week for a special project. And yeah. I was chilling in the back room, like right before I left at like 530 in the morning and something moved in the room I was in and there was nobody else even in the back room with me. Really? Yeah. And then of course I was sitting in there back there today working on the computer and something else moved behind me today too. So, huh. Whatever's at my work, I think, starting to want to act, interact with me now, too. So, are you going to take the time to talk to it or are you just going to work? Uh, I don't know. I might take time to talk to it. Sneak a little spirit box in your pocket, put your I little could. headphones on, <laughs> just like, just pretend like you're talking to yourself, but you're actually listening. <laughs> right. I'm asking myself questions. So <laughs> that's really not out of the. That's really not out of the ordinary. I mean, I pretty much work by myself anyway. No one really interacts with me all that much anyway. So right. no one really knows. You'd be walking around like, do you know you're dead? And somebody would be like, what? What? <laughs> and you're like looking off in space. <laughs> right. Considering the first hour I'm at work, the store's not even open. So I could always do it in the first hour of the day. So. That's true. That's true. But yeah, um, I have lots of equipment to go through. So like I said, next week, I'm going to probably do some more, show some of the other yeah. cases that I got. Um, but yeah, I was super ecstatic to go pick this up. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate you coming on here and sharing some of the goodies you got. And I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of the next week. Um, yep, I'm probably going to bring some, I'm going to bring some of this stuff with me this weekend on our ghost hunt too. So yes. So, yeah, I'm excited to bring some cool stuff this weekend. I would love to see it. Um, yep. You missed the tarot. Uh-uh, you didn't miss tarot. We've not done it yet. Because how much we time do we have tarot. left? We have five minutes. Should, do you we do a do, should we do tarot just for Amol? Yes. This Amol. will be just a strictly Amol tarot. Amol, you're going to get a tarot reading? Let me grab my thing. Okay, so Amol, here's... I said we. Okay, so are you saying we, as in you and I, Brad and I, you, Brad and I? What do you mean we? Well, he is our person that usually goes and looks it up for us. So, Jill wants the terror of the week. She wants to know how her week's going. Okay, we can do that too. Okay, so Amol, Amol. We miss the tarot, meaning you and everybody else. No, you guys did not miss tarot. We were going to see if we had enough time for tarot. Of course, we're the last show of the night for Jeremy, so we're always allowed to run over. But here's what I want you to do, Amel, because uh, I'm going to ask I'm going to ask for Amel's participation on this since he's watching. I want you to give me a number one through fifteen. So what's your number? Eight. Amol says eight. Okay, this is going to be your tarot for the week, guys. 
we are going to go down to the eighth card. I haven't even shuffled. I'm not going to shuffle. We're going to go down to the eighth card. Make Brad. yourself make yourself bigger so I can actually see your, the card too. I don't. Oh think yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll flip flop here. Okay, that works. All right, this is going to be a terrible way to read. Now, Brad, mm -hmm. he picked card number eight. I want you to pick car a, a number one through fifteen. Thirteen. And that's gonna be thirteen, of course. And that's gonna be our investigation this weekend. Oh my. So we we'll go down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right. We're going to do 13 first. Our card, okay. Brad, this is how okay. we're going to go. Knight of Pentacles. Okay. All right. So, this is specifically for the weekend in regards to our investigation. Guys, this is your tarot reading from a non-tarot reader. And oh my gosh, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. We got to do it. <laughs> your intro. All right. So this guy's got the ball in his hands. Let's get started with reading. For the weekend. So, we going to have the balls in our hand or the ball with the star. It's like superstar, gold star. Yay. Does it does it have anything to do with Kool-Aid? Oh. <gasps> Kool-Aid. That's a great question. Actually, no, it does not have to do with Kool-Aid. Okay. We see the horse here. This horse is kind of pissed off. He's really pissed off. So you got this dude here who's going to go on an investigation. He's got this little gold star, like he's a superstar, and his horse is all pissed. So he looks pissed. Look at him. He does. So I'm going to read it this way. All right. So this weekend, we're going to show up, and there's going to be somebody outside this location pissing us off. Okay? The investigator okay. is not this person the investigator is the horse okay this is my prediction okay <laughs> the investigator is the horse so somebody's gonna tick us off right but we're gonna see this guy and he's gonna be flashing his pretty little gold star balls and we're gonna be like no we ain't done with this and we are going to buck him off like so that's how our investigations go and once that's done we're going to celebrate, we're going to run free, and we're going to have a wonderful, beautiful investigation. That sounds great. Because that kind of happened the last time we investigated together. Because we had it that did. weirdo <laughs> we had the weirdo show up at the location and come inside. So It did. <laughs> I can see it happening again. There we go. That is our investigation read. Now, Amol. Um... Oh, yeah, firecrackers at the front door. I got to love that. Oh, yeah. Abel yeah. shared with us what the Nine of Pentacles is. It's about the daily task and the responsibility that one has to gain through a specific project. This knight has the patience to, uh, to accomplish all its given duties and is considered by others reliable and committed to his work. So what? He's committed to annoying us because, uh-uh. Uh-uh, we're going to buck him right off. We're going <laughs> to buck him right off. To see this card is an indication that there is a need to be trustworthy and liable. No, we're not going to trust him either. He's done. He's gone. He's going to walk up there with his pretty gold star balls. We're done. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's my read for this weekend. All right, guys. Now your read for the week by another reader. Our car is. I took it as a perspective of the investigator. <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> He's reading it from the horse's view. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's our card. What the heck? Uh, this is, I can't read it backwards. Seven of cups. Of course there's cups in a reading <laughs> that where Brad's around. I'm surprised the other one wasn't cups. Seven 
of cups. So let's read it. Whoa, why is there a head here and there's a snake here? There's some jewels. This is a cluster. What is it? I hope this is not. Mm. Cluster of a week. A cluster of a week. That's how, mine, that's, that's how mine's been so far. So I can, I can relate. <laughs> All right. So we have a bunch of cups and we have a bunch of different stuff in the cups. Like as if we have choices, right? We have choices, but it's going to be a cluster at the same time. So let's see. Um, first off, this dude right here. I don't even know why he's in this. I, I saw him, the, the first thing I thought, for some reason, the first thing that popped in my head when I seen him was orchestra. Don't know why. Don't ask questions. I'm just the non-terror reader over here, okay? I don't take questions. You just shut up and listen, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty interesting with choices, yes. Um, so we're just going to pretend like he's, an, he's important, but he is not important to this week. What's most important is all this little crap going on. I mean, he's pretty shocked. And I think that's kind of how you're going to feel is pretty stinking shocked this week, guys. It's kind of a mess. There's kind of a mess of things we have to take care of, especially with the upcoming summer, with so many people come, getting out of school, with so many colleges ending for the year. There is so much to do, guys. This is this is what I'm feeling from this card. Um and oh my gosh, it's kind of crazy. It's as crazy as having a head in your cup, right? Like your mind is just like, oh, I just want to cover my head up with this cup and forget the world, right? Remember the bowls? Maybe like bowls where they cut your hair. Remember mm -hmm. those? Maybe a big bowl like that and just drown it out. Drown out the noise because this is what it's going to be. It's going to be a giant cluster. All right. So this is what you're looking at for the week. And guys, this is going to be your week through the weekend into next week is my prediction um so be prepared you're gonna be shocked i think i feel like the, we are this guy i'm starting to feel like we are this guy it's gonna be like a shocked <sighs> thing i'm just thinking about work right now and i'm like a ton of <laughs> yep that's <laughs> like that's all i'm thinking about right now is work i'm not thinking about life investigation i'm thinking work specifically so I hope that only pertains to me and doesn't pertain to everybody. Otherwise, we all probably should have put vacation time in this week. We probably should have. I'm out for like three more weeks, and then I get vacation time again. So Well, it's going to be a cluster. <laughs> so fully expect that. I'm feeling work vibes, so I'm just going to re reiterate, guys. I'm sorry. Prepare yourself. It might get a little crazy, especially before all these holidays while all this stuff's going on and ending and starting. Ending. There's a lot of chapters starting and ending this time of year, so... Keep that in mind. Let's see what Amel says. Amel, the seven of cups symbolizes imagination, choice, wishful thinking, illusion, and fantasy. The card shows persons with their back turned towards us, contemplating seven images that are creeping out of the cups, all of which are floating in the clouds. Clouds are a rep representation of dreams, illusion, thoughts, and imagination. There are numerous fantasies that are appearing from the cups, which are representative of the many visions that one sees while dreaming. The seven of cups may apply to you or that. Wait, wait, it says the seven of cups may apply that you, that we what? What's, where's the rest of it, Amo? It's implying that we need to what? We, this is, if we just gotta, we gotta make a choice, right? We gotta survive the cluster. We gotta survive the cluster of a week. Oh, here it goes. The seven of cups may apply that you have a number of options to choose from. Well, I think the biggest option people are going to have is like maybe they should use that PTO time. <laughs> I'm just saying. I've got, I've got 20 minutes left. <laughs> oh, so, you got 20 minutes left. <laughs> You're excited to get through the week with the seven cups? Bring them visions. Well, you you have fun with that. I just I feel I feel exhausted thinking about it already. Um, it does get crazy. Thus is life. Yes. But maybe maybe we will get to make a choice at our investigation this weekend, and we'll choose to make it a great investigation. So, because this is a location I've never been to, and I'm super stoked about. So I want to make it the best as possible. Yes, yes. And I, I'm hoping it's uh, an adventure for us, for sure. Um, guys, if you want, we could go live. Uh, definitely, that's always an option. Um, I believe everybody that's going will probably be cool with it. Otherwise, 
I always, anytime I go with friends, they know I will do my lives away from them. If they prefer, that's no problem at all. Yeah, I should be able to go live by then too. I think I, I, get, <laughs> I think I get paroled a Saturday morning, so. He'll be paroled Saturday morning, so you may get to see Brad. Um, so just keep that in mind. You're stoked. Thank you, Jill. Thank you for the positive vibes on our investigation. But we are totally still going to kick uh, our, our horse is still going to totally kick that dude in the face. So um, and we're, and we're still bringing Kool-Aid, too. We're still bringing um, Kool-Aid to it also. Are you bringing grape? Um, I know you don't like grape, but I know that's the proper flavor to bring. Well, we'll just <laughs> maybe bring a mix of different ones. <laughs> So, all right, guys. Um, Brad, anything else you gotta say today? Um, sorry that I wasn't able to share this on my own page because I got into Facebook jail, but we made it work. So, yep. And hopefully by next week, Brad will be out of jail and a free man once again. Yeah. Hopefully. But with that said, everybody, do feel free to share this, like it, subscribe. Do all that fun social media stuff. Yep. And we'll see you in the next week. Bye. Yep. Bye, everybody.